Thank you for having me. My name is Araya, and I'm come, I'm here before you today to represent duplicity. Um, not just duplicity of being born a male and now expressing and identifying as a female, as a transgender woman of color. Um, I come here with a different kind of duplicity. I got a call from Michael last night asking, can you come here? Can you come here and speak and tell a little bit about you? And you know, I struggled with that because currently I'm going through financial issues, just like my trans sister who just spoke before me. Um, I have been chronically unemployed for the past three years. At the same time of being chronically unemployed, I have started Miami-Dade Miami County's first transgender resource center in its history, uh, which we now I advocate and I speak on behalf of the transgender community. I've spoken at universities, at colleges, uh, Harvard Journal of uh, Public Interest at their law school just did a paper about me just this past week. But yet, I had to forego eating and get whatever change that I could to make it here and make that three hour trip from Miami Dade, I'm that person, <laughs> who put forth that sacrifice because human rights is important to me. It's important to our community. You know, it's not just, it's not about equality in the definition of the word. What it truly is about is about treating other people as humans. Uh, we call them, we have a phrase, God-given rights. We have that phrase, God-given, because there are certain rights, certain opportunities that every human being that is born here on this earth should have access to. We all have, should have the access to the quality of life that all of us deserve in just being human, and just being here, and just being alive. Yet otherwise, being because of my gender expression, because of fighting my suicidal thoughts and attempts to actually be standing present here to you today, and to be able to make the strides that I have for the community to make something happen that has never existed. With Safe Day, we are uh, trying to pass the Human Rights Ordinance for Miami-Dade County. Here in Broward, I come here today, and those protections are here, but they're not in Miami-Dade. If we make changes on the state level, but that would trickle down to the counties, to our biggest metropolitan area here in the state of Florida, to where human rights is needed. It's needed for me, it's needed for other people in my community, and, and if you pass those rights for transgender people, then those rights can be more set for everyone, every citizen here in the state, in the country. So, I thank you. Thank you. I'm the founder and director of Trans Miami, which is Miami Dade's first drop in resource center for transgender and gender non conforming persons in the county. So, Araya, why are you here today at Save Dade's Faith Rally here on Bayfront Park? Well, we're here at the Faith Rally today in order to uh, honor support for the Trans Apology Campaign and gaining transgender rights under the Human Rights Ordinance for the county, being that transgender individuals do not have protection when it comes to housing, jobs, and uh, public spaces on a state level, on a federal level, and even here on our Miami-Dade level. A riot. so you run a drop-in center on Miami Beach for the transgender community. Yes. Tell, tell me about some of the stories and some of the um, crises that you have come in that you have to address and help someone with. Well, we've had dozens of individuals from the Miami transgender community come into the center. Uh, most of the things that uh, really are of concern to the individuals that come in are employment. So many of them are unemployed. You know, over 75% of the individual, individuals that come in have no way of legally getting uh, the type of money that comes from a regular job in order to get housing, in order to take care of their health needs and, and whatnot. And uh, we actually had a girl who just came in this past Thursday that was dealing with uh, discrimination when it came to the Miami-Dade Police Depart Department. 
where she had called in as an eyewitness to a crime that was happening. And when the police ended up finding out that she was trans due given her ID, she got arrested for no reason other than uh, uh, the point of, harp of stopping an arrest from taking place. So here in Miami Day, there's so much that happens, uh, so many things that I come across from the clients that do come in Trans Miami and I myself that uh, deal with and suffer with and myself being unemployed for like two years and uh, just a difficulty of giving the same access of, of the quality of life that all people are supposed to have. Araya, what are some of the fears and what kind of violence is out there that transgender people um, incur more so than any other population that you've seen? Well, um, more, most populations don't have that inherent danger of having something happen to you outside, out and about, and in public just for you being you, just for you being trans, being publicly trans, and looking uh, non-conforming. Uh, some people that are so gun ho with the gender binary system and are uh, stuck in the, in the ways that they feel that things should be or need to be, that uh, transgender people are, are discriminated and uh, we, we go through domestic violence issues and so many violence issues that aren't even on record because transgender people are not willing to even come forward because they know that there are no rights and there are no protections for us. So just recently when the ordinance amendment was pulled from the table um, after the Christian Family Coalition um, really acted very unchristian and decided to work to further marginalize transgender people and further make sure that they weren't protected by law. Um, how did that make you feel? Um, well, like you said, coming from a Christian atmosphere and myself, my parents, uh, being Christian and raising me Christian, uh, you know, it came out of nowhere for me. You know, I expected someone like, you know, neo-Nazis to come, you know, and try to attack the rights of transgender people. And then for the subject at matter of as to how they attack us, you know, bathroom issues, I don't see how the bathroom issue has anything to do with gender identity. I mean, if anything, it may be a topic on the sexual orientation, but we already have that protection as a county here. So, you know, for gender identity to be, uh, you know, a lampoon through the Christian Family Coalition is not right, but I'm really happy to see Christian organizations like Unitarian congregations being here today to show their support. So, just recently, a Democrat state representative elected in Miami, actually, she stated that that, tra that amendment to protect transgender people as part of Miami-Dade's Human Rights Ordinance is immoral. And any legislation, even in Tallahassee, to protect LGBT folk is immoral. What would you say to someone who is using their faith as the excuse to marginalize a population that is discriminated against? Well, for somebody using their faith, I mean, if you're of the Christian faith, then you should follow the example of Christ, who took people that other uh, people in the public of his time felt were immoral, and he accepted them and, you know, and took them into the fold. And so, you know, I have the same feeling that we all should be of that same way, that no matter how a person chooses to live, you know, even if that, that choice of life is not something that uh, will be conducive to most people's frame of mind, we all still have the, the same uh, equal access to the quality of life that, you know, we all deserve that. Great. Thank you. Thank you.